Okay, we live? Yeah, we live. All right, so you do your introduction. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, all right, we back, we back, we back. And uh, as I said, I want to bring uh, to the platform our sister deity. And uh, of course, this is the reality tip on earth. And uh, many of you know our sister deity, uh, sometimes known as Sister Brittany, but we're going to call her from now on Sister Deity. And Sister Deity wanted to come on and have a little conversation and bring everybody in. And for those who want to join the conversation, I'm going to put the link. I'm going to put the link in the chat room for those who want to join the conversation. But uh, this is basically. Sister Deity Show. And with that, let's give her a, a well round of applause. Let's bring on the topic that she's chosen for tonight is the truth of, of why black males date outside their race. Very interesting. And why black women wear hair weaves. <laughs> okay. We gotta add that on the title. <laughs> okay. Well, with that said, it's, it's uh it's the ball is in your court, sister. So everybody, sister deity. All right, what's up, y'all? So, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the reason why the truth behind why black males date outside their race, and also why black women wear hair weave, <clears throat> and it all to kind of tangles in and coincides with each other. So, of course, Angel, you're gonna you know interject in the conversation, correct? I might. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so the reason behind uh, the truth behind why black males date outside their race, I kind of touched on this on a previous video um, with Angel and a person who was listening in. Um, he went ahead and joined the conversation via a link. So the reason why black men date outside their race, date non-black women, specifically the descendants of slaves, uh -huh. is because of the lack of testosterone, and it can usually be due to homosexuality, uh, which would mean that they're on a down low as opposed to being outright openly homosexual, or their testosterone, their masculinity has been compromised. And what I mean by that is um, not to say that down low men do not date black women, but that is just like the analogies to say that all chickens, all birds fly. A chicken is a bird, does a chicken chirp, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's somewhat like that, which means that everything doesn't necessarily fit, but it fits to a degree. So what I'm saying is, and just to break that down, is... Excuse me, excuse me, Sister Deity. Can you, can you huh? just talk a, just a little, a little louder, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I mean, yeah. Black men that date outside their race usually are homosexual, meaning on the down low. But that does not mean that down low males do not date black women. It just means when a black man dates outside of his race, either he is on the down low homosexual or his masculinity and testosterone has been compromised. And I'm going to break all of this down. Okay. So when a black man is engaged in homosexual activities, um, and he has grown up around a lot of non-black people, or he's in that emo or gothic or whatever type of environment, what happens is, a man's testosterone levels decreases and his estrogen level increases um, once he engages in homosexual activities, which can change not only the way he looks via his facial structure and or body structure, but it also changes the way he acts. So what people think that they're 
doing homosexual acts and just because you know it's something that has been kept in the closet that nobody would know about it that's absolutely false if a person is aware and is um has enough discernment to tell based on those factors that I've given whether or not a man is engaged in homosexual activity. Um, based on, like I said, the, his, his facial structure, body structure changes, and the way he acts will change. Um, his mannerisms will change. And the same thing for a female. If a female wants to take on a masculine energy, her testosterone level will increase, which usually will... Um, will cause her facial structure to be a, a bit stronger than a feminine type of woman or her body structure may be a bit masculine or her disposition may be a bit more masculine so we have to keep that in mind that all men have estrogen levels but of course to a certain degree and all women have testosterone levels but of course to a certain degree so how that leads to them wanting to date outside their race so when a man has uh, compromised his testosterone levels, he has to deal with someone who does not uh, make him feel less of a man, uh, who does not intimidate him, um, and who does not uh, challenge his manhood. A black, black people are the dominant race, racial group of people. Anything or anyone after that, any straight-haired person is not as dominant as a woolly-haired black person. So in order for him to feel masculine, he will choose to date outside of his race because to them, to him, that is the equivalence to femininity because again, his masculinity has already been dropped down. So his masculinity or his ability to be masculine is on the same level damn near not far from a black woman because he's already been compromised. So he done dropped down a level. Now he has to deal with, with a woman that is extremely weak, who does not understand what it means to be a black man mentally or spiritually, who will not question his sexuality, who's just looking at him as a sex toy and a sex object in a big burly black bug, and that makes him feel manly. She will not question him on certain things because, again, she doesn't even understand who he is, how he's supposed to be, how he's supposed to think. He could tell her whatever he wants to tell her, and she'll go along with it because she does not understand the spirit of what a black man or person is supposed to be like. Another way in which the reason why a lot of black men date outside their race and how their masculinity and testosterone is compromised is they grew up around a bunch of white people. Um, and I've said this on another uh, a live with young Pharaoh. Um, so if a black man and talking proper is not a problem. I believe that I talk proper, but you can still tell that I'm a black woman. But when you listen to black males specifically, because we're talking about the strength of a black man and the reason why he dates outside of his race, when you listen to how a black man talks that have grown up around a bunch of white people, he may talk proper, but you can tell his spirit, the way that he speaks, the tone of his voice, the inflections in his voice sounds like a white person. It sounds off. He doesn't sound strong. That strength has been stripped because anytime you choose, or if not choose, but maybe by circumstance to be around a bunch of white people as a black person, your mask as a black man, your masculinity is going to be compromised because in order to be in those circles, you have to make those people comfortable. The natural state of a black man is not going to make a white person or white people comfortable. That is the reason why in, in corporate America, the laws and the rules and the regulations are really for those of black people to follow, not white people, because that is who they are. The only thing that they have to do is just wear clothes. But anything else regarding how they talk, the way their hair is, everything else is who they are naturally. When black people go to corporate America, they have to conform completely, meaning the way that they talk, the way that they do their hair in some instances, the way that they act. And that takes a strain on a black person. That is the reason why a lot of black people that work corporate jobs around other races of people are very highly stressed because you're compromising and acting all day, every day. And in some cases, 
that that act can stick. And that's what usually happens if a black person has grown up around a lot of white people. So when a black male has grown up around a lot of white people, he takes on the mannerisms and the characteristics of white people because that is a survival tactic. You can't be yourself around people that don't look like you because you will be ostracized. So whether it be conscious or subconscious, and depending on the instance, he has to conform. And when a black man has conformed to acting like a white person or taking on white ideologies, his masculinity has been compromised because he is lowering his testosterone. He is lowering his masculinity. He's lowering his vibration. And so, therefore, he can only feel comfortable, not can, but he will only feel comfortable to deal with a non-black woman because to him, her strength is overbearing because he is not at his level or the level that he should be at naturally because he's around a bunch of different breeds and species of people. And so that is the reason why uh, a lot of that's the truth behind mm. why black men uh, date outside of their race. Now, when it comes to Scott's, Scott's lawn care said that I need to get out more. No, <laughs> not necessarily. Coon Patrol said black women smoke and drink too much and wear too many tacky wigs is a turn off. Uh, yeah, there are, and I'm going to talk about that. There are black women that wear weaves and do what they do, but of course not all. That's just like saying all white people fuck dogs. I'm pretty sure that they probably don't, but a good amount of them probably do, and I'm pretty sure that you can find one that doesn't if that's what you're really looking for. Now, um, when it comes to black women wearing weave, now black women oftentimes say that they wear weave because it's their style or their preference. I've had a black woman on the Armand Wiggins show, um, and this was about four or five months ago, try to say that this is something that the Egyptians did and this is our history. First and foremost, Egyptians did not wear wigs to look like white people. Um, they had a lot of braided wigs and stuff like that, but they did not try to look like Becky. Um, and they did not wear blonde hair. And then you have black people that say that, well, you know, there are blacks that have blonde hair. It, first and foremost, black women to make any excuse to wear that motherfucking wig. Now, if a black man, they, for most black women wear weaves because they find that, and, and when I say a weave, I'm not talking about one that matches or resembles the texture or, of their hair or does not necessarily change the texture of their hair, but works with the texture of their hair, such as braids or twists. I'm not talking about that. When a black woman wears straight hair, whether she's perming it or she is putting braiding her real hair down to put a hair hat on, that is because of self-hate. Um, you don't see white girls walking around here with no afros, and if you do see them with braids, it's usually online on the internet, um, or it's just a very rare occurrence. You just don't see that like that. So when you see black girls that wear their hair like that, because it's such a norm to see them wearing straight hair, to them they consider it to be a protective style, but you can protect your hair, you can put a protective style with your own natural hair. Unfortunately, black women just don't think that their hair is presentable, nor do they think that it looks good because society tells them that it doesn't. And it has become a norm for them to wear another woman's hair on your head when you don't realize that when you go out into the stores every day, these white people, these Asian people, these Chinese people, these other people, these races of people laugh at you. Um, and in some cases, most cases, a lot of the times, the reason why black women wear it, besides the fact that society, you know, makes them feel insecure, but black men also fall into that um, system or that, that ideology of making a black woman feel insecure about her natural hair. And in some cases, will only talk to a sister, or, or I don't even like to say sister or brother, that's so cliche and full of shit. <laughs> but... Some black men will only talk to a black woman if she has a weave in her hair, which further uh, insinuates that your naturalness is not good or it's not appealing or it's not attractive. And so we do these things because, and when I say we, I don't wear weave anymore, but we do these things because people 
react to us a certain way. And when you get a positive reaction, you continue to do certain things in order to keep that reaction going. You you know the reactions that you get when you wear braids. You know the reactions that you get when you wear um, your weave. Most black girls wear braids that, and they don't wear it very often, but they may wear it because it's a specific trend for that moment. But they'll go right back to a weave as though that's their their natural state of being, and it's it's not. And so, um, what I've noticed is that a lot of black women who do wear their natural hair, uh, which is very strange, is usually butch lesbians. So it's almost to say that a black woman's natural everything, whether it be no makeup, no weave, and all of that, is equated to masculinity, which is how this system and black men make a lot of black women feel. So um, if a black man is dating a sister, a black woman rather, who has a wet and wavy weave or a straight weave, what he's ultimately saying to you is that he will prefer a woman that looks, that has that hair naturally, but since he's comfortable with you and he's already dealing with you, he'll let you go ahead and add that to help him with his fantasy and his genuine desire. Um, and you don't see anything wrong with that because you think it's a hairstyle. But a white boy is not going to feel comfortable with his white chick wearing no afro or um, any straight or any braid. Mm-hmm. And this guy said that is uh, why most weave wearing black women are single. Actually, most weave wearing black women are not single because a lot of black men prefer black men who cannot uh, get what they actually want, which may be something of another race that actually has that texture of hair. They'll settle for a sister who has that hair. And most black women in the hood have that type of hair. Um, anybody want to jump in and talk to me? He says, my woman has an afro. That's good, Scott. I mean, it's not that she has an afro. That's her natural hair. So she's just wearing her hair. Mm -hmm. So if anybody want to jump in and talk to the queen, y'all know y'all are <laughs> welcome. <laughs> and not just type, but y'all can actually jump in on a link and right. talk. Scott's long hair says, I look at the body first hair, the cherry on top. Okay. Coon Patrol says, black men do not prefer weaves. Black women think they need them. No, a lot of black men, and I didn't say all black men, but a lot of black men, just like black women, are in a system that they have been, their, their thoughts have been compromised. And so, therefore, um, that you're going to want to do things that make you feel equivalent to what the dominant society calls beautiful. Um, and I mean dominant as far as systematic. Black women with weaves are freakier. Black women with weaves are usually very aggressive a lot of the times. And a lot of the times their personality changes when they put that weave on because of, for one, chemicals. Um, and, and then you have hair that's coming from another person on another person's head. Um, you know, it's self-hate. I mean, you might have a girl with a blonde weave, but she's talking all this hood ratchet shit. So it's like, how does that, you're trying to look like a white girl, but then trying to represent yourself as a hood black chick. It's like, it, it just, it, it's confusion, really. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, for me, for me personally, uh, first of all, okay, I want to... Can you go ahead and click on the link so that we can talk? You don't even got to show your face. I cannot hear you, um, Angel. You can't hear me. I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you was you was talking. I just got quiet. I mean, this is this is your this is your vote. You know. Okay. But uh, for me, first of all. I'm going to tell you, I've never seen and been around so many men who trip on women's hairstyle. I don't care about weave. I don't care about no wigs. I don't care. I've never cared nothing about none of that stuff. I've never tripped off women's hairstyles. I just don't. My main objective, 
My main objective, see, look, my main objective is this. I just want to know, is the sister on my side as far as bringing down this system of Caucasian supremacy? That's, that's what I want to know. That's my number one priority. When you liberate yourself from an oppressor and you become independent and do your own thing, or you right, show, so, or you see, look. The hair on her head will indicate in some cases and dictate how, so again, this goes back to an analogy. Not all black women that don't wear weaves and that are natural are not coons and are not, you know, um, self-hating women because a lot of those women, unfortunately, are either gay or they date white men because white men love black women for uh, purposes that are not necessarily conducive to the woman, but white men love black women who wear their hair natural or they like dark skin natural black women um for those who really have just like a fetish you know so those women black women who usually wear their hair natural are either lesbian for the most part or they're dating white men for the most part this is not all um and those are usually the chicks that you know claim to be very educated socioeconomically, not necessarily educated in knowledge of self, because there's a personality that matches a lot of these hairstyles that black women wear. And you see a lot of sisters, you know, with the natural hair, with the glasses, they may be heavy set or just regular sized women or but they're usually brown skin or dark skin and they, they like I said they wear their natural hair. But they're not interested in black men. And not necessarily because they literally or they are not interested in black men, but most black men are not checking for them. Those women have, in some cases, said, forget it. You know, I'm just going to be me. You know, I know that they're, 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 they're like the Black Lives Matter women. A lot of them have a very feminist type of disposition about themselves. So every sister that wears her hair natural is not necessarily um, for black people. But what I will say is that if you want somebody to be on your side, the fact that she got a weave in her head that does not match her natural texture or does not work with her natural texture, she can't be for any type of liberation because the first liberation got to start on the mind, in the head, on the mind. So if you put a wig on your head, then that shows where your mind is. And like you have women who speak all this pro-black stuff and they may genuinely feel it. But at the same time, you're still conforming to white supremacy. So the thought would be, are you genuinely trying to say that you don't want to be a part of the system or are you upset that you're not being accepted by the system? And that's the issue that a lot of these so-called wannabe woke-ass mugs people you don't really have their anger or their their so-called knowledge if you really listen to them it's not that you know they like the hell with these crackers they want to be accepted by white people and their frustration is, is that they're not being accepted um uh, let me read the um yeah so somebody needs to Yeah, um, Sunshine, you can think of females who are wearing braids who are foul. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, you got to also think, too, that braids, although it is, it is a style that works with your natural hair, it's still pulling your hair down. It's not letting your antennas up. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I know for me, when I have braids for a certain amount of time, I start to get depressed. I have to let my hair out because your hair is your antenna. A Syrian Jew said, sister is partially right here. If you're talking about me, then uh, thank you, Syrian, because that's the nice thing you done said to me, because usually we go at it. <laughs> Coon Patrol, lesbians and mature women usually rock dress. Part of that is true. Lesbians um, do rock dress, and women who are like feminists or date outside their race, unless her dress are like, um, unless, you know, her dress and her look is still in some kind of. Cause you 
Uh oh, we lost. We lost Sister Brittany somehow. I don't know what happened. Is it on my end or is it on her end? I, I don't know. We're going to see if I can get her back. But what I want to say is that uh, we talk about cosmetics. You know, I, I don't care whether you got a weave or, or natural hair or, or any of that stuff. What I'm, my concern is, are you ready to fight? Are you willing to fight and deal with this 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 uh oppression it don't make no difference what you wearing what's on your head that's right scott big girls need love too i i let you have the big girls <laughs> i don't i'm not prejudiced I, I was supposed to be married to a big girl 300 <laughs> 300 pounds so i'm not prejudiced against big girls but you can you can have you can have the big girl scott <laughs> let me see if we can get Get Brittany back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, three. She had to be 300, uh, cool. She had to be. But, you know, I'm trying to look at people for the person that they are. You know, I'm not looking, you know, at the physical attributes I'm trying to, you know. I agree, you know, what is this, you know, I've heard that too before, uh, about the antenna, the uh, the hair. I guess I don't have an antenna because I don't have any hair on my head no more. And I, I can't tell the difference between when I had hair on my head, this antenna thing, I don't understand. Is that just a woman thing? Is that just a woman thing? But I did want to make a disclaimer. The views expressed right now is not necessarily those of this ministry. So I just want to let y'all let y'all know I, you know, this is that's that's sister deities, that's the way she's looking at things. Me myself, that's some cosmetic stuff. And if you are able to, your number one priority should be just coming up out just because you have a you got you have natural hair. There's a lot of sisters. There's a lot of people out in the black country community. You got to have natural hair. Ain't doing a damn thing. Don't have no spirit in order to relieve yourself of an oppressor once and for all. So what? And then there are probably sisters who wear weeds who will fight to the death. So I don't, I'm not tripping off cosmetic stuff. It's nice. Natural hair. That's nice. But for men, I don't know why it's a big issue. Just like Sister Sunshine said. That's a uh, that's a distraction. All that stuff is a distraction. Who cares? Here we go. Yeah, we dropped, sister. Hey, everybody. So I'm back. So, um, yeah. So, and that's pretty much. So somebody said hair stores don't do it. Black women just want hair like other women, soft and shiny, and almost straight, low self esteem. They put hair care stores in our communities to try to make us feel insecure about our natural hair. So Miss Fox is correct, and then the second part is it, it, actually in order. So they initially made black people feel insecure back in slavery about, you know, their hair, their hair texture, and so forth. Um, and so what that has done now is it has left a residual effect on the new generation of black people, which is the reason why black people carry on those customs. Because uh -huh. so if black women stop wearing weaves, then those businesses will go out of business. But the reason why black women wear weaves is because they don't want to look black. Looking black, looking fully black or too black to a black woman is usually um, detrimental to her everyday existence in society, which is unfortunate. That's the reason why you'll see the darkest black girl with the with the with with the, a weave that is either wet and wavy, you know, um, straight. And and when you see that, it's usually because she's not comfortable with the fact that for one, she's already dark skinned. Two, she may have very very broad features. So she wants to, in her mind, soften that look to make her more palatable 
to people on the outside world because dark skinned black women just moving around in their bodies in the world, they get treated negatively also by other black people. This is another thing I wanted to talk on. We talk about colorism and how black men are um, contribute to colorism, but we don't talk about how black women, especially older dark skinned women, they contribute to colorism as well because they've been through issues that they then contribute or pass on to their dark skinned sons or their dark skinned daughters. You got dark skinned women that tell their that pick on their dark skinned kids. You have a lot of dark skinned older women in the church. You see a lot of colorism in Christian churches. Um so we don't talk about how older black women contribute to this. They treat kids a certain way based on complexion. They will literally tell you not to date somebody who is dark skinned, you know, because they have issues with their complexion. Although they had a dark skinned child, usually by somebody else who was also dark skinned. So we don't talk about um, how black women contribute to colorism because People feel like for some odd reason, you know, the women who talk about black, how black men contribute, usually are not being chosen by the black men that they want. And black men do contribute to colorism, but nobody talks about how black women also play a part in the self-hatred of dark skin. Mm -hmm. So does anybody in the comment section want to jump on? Absolutely. So Siri and Jude, uh, self-hate is definitely hindering the black community. And furthermore, white people and, and all non-black non people are Neanderthals, which means that they are a percentage of an animal. Their hair is not even human hair. It's the hair of an animal. Every animal on the planet has the same texture of hair as a white person, whether it be a horse, a cow, a donkey, a dog, a rabbit. Every race has the same, every other race besides black has the very, has a similar texture of hair as non-black people. So when those people are trying to, when black men date those versus the people, it's damn near like you're fucking an animal. That's almost like bestiality because a Neanderthal is not a person. Well, we have a, Yeah, well, Neanderthals are running the show right now based on specific details, which I won't get into right now, but... Um, the best people are savage, and black people are not savage by nature. Well, we have and a guest. So, we have a guest in the block. Uh, I want to introduce. Uh, yeah, Christopher. Hi. How you doing, Christopher? To the panel. Hey, Talika, you doing? I'm fine, sir. And yourself? Not bad. All right. Well, we know we got we got special. Special guest, uh, Sister Deities, uh, she's running the show tonight. Okay, I, I'll listen. <laughs> Go ahead, Sister Deity. You said what now? I said, he's he's listening. Did. You can go ahead and uh, keep oh, talking. No, you can go ahead and interject since you joined in. Go ahead. No, no, I'll, 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 I'll listen. I'm, I'll listen to, listen to you talk. Go right ahead. No, I said, I said mostly what I had to say for right now. I mean, that's the reason why the dialogue can continue so that we can go back and forth and bounce off of each other's ideas. So go well, ahead. Uh, uh, they said in, in the, in the uh, chat room, they want you to explain what do you mean, how do you, what do you mean by the hair is an antenna? Who said that? That's what, that's what they was talking about in the chat room. How is the hair an antenna? Because, you know, we know what an antenna is, you know, like, like insects have an antenna. So a black person's hair um, our hair doesn't fall flat. Our hair stands up, um, which means that our vibrations, the way we move, the way we talk, the rhythm that we have, um, our energy is reflected from our hair to our body. 
And that is the reason why a lot of the times when a black man cuts his hair off, if it doesn't fall out naturally, if he cuts his hair off, a lot of things for him just don't operate the same way because you're removing your antennas. Your hair, um, <laughs> when it's out, when your hair is out, when a black person's hair is out, um, it can create happiness. You can feel the vibes of another person. A lot of the times, if your hair is conked down, or if it's for me, if my hair is covered for too long, or if I have braids, I can get depressed because my hair needs to be free. It's like my hair is being locked up. It's just like if you're physically in a room for too long, you're going to be claustrophobic. You're going to get claustrophobic. Um, if you're not out in the sun, you're going to start to lack vitamin D, which can also cause depression. So your hair has to be up. It doesn't, it doesn't fall. We don't. Our hair is not dead. Our hair is very much so alive so that the electricity that keeps our hair up needs to be stimulated in order for us to function properly. And the reason why blacks don't function properly or as a whole or the reason why we're all scatterbrained for one, is because we're cursed. But another reason, too, is because our hair is not in unison, which is something that definitely needs to be um, needs to be worked on as far as black people. Because you can't have unison with black people that have weed or that have a perm because their vibrations are going to be off. The way that a person wears their hair a lot of the time, in some instances, contributes to how they think. Um, and when you strip your, your hair of that energy, when you perm it or when you braid it down and then put something else over it, you're not even thinking how you should be thinking. That is the reason why in slavery, they either shaved off the black woman's hair or they covered it up because your hair is an antenna. And in some cases, they try to say that it was for beauty purposes, and it may be, but your hair is an antenna. And what that does is it creates a sense of unity when you see other people that look like you. You vibrate off of that. Just like white people and every other race of people, they vibrate off the fact that they have something in common. They have a Neanderthal gene, which is the reason why they don't attack each other in the same way that they attack the chosen people. So if this guy's on the phone, no, I didn't say electricity keeps our hair up. We are electrical people. That's the reason why we have rhythm. White people, like for instance, if you have... Um, if you have a white person place their hand on one of those electric balls, their hair will stand up on their head. White people do not have the same vibration, the same energy, which uh, their pineal glands are calcified. They don't. That's the reason why they don't have rhythm the way that we do. And so all of that shows in not only the lack of melanin that they have, but the fact that their hair falls straight. These people can eat raw meat. They can deal with cold climates. They are not energy people. They are energy deficient type people. That is the reason why they're more callous, calculated and cold in their behavior and their disposition. And that is the reason why when you see black people who hang around a lot of white people or who have hung around a lot of white people, their hatred for blackness is on 10 because for one, they're not even allowing themselves, their, their body is in an unnatural state, which is going to cause them to be even more aggressive than a white person because you're trying to fit into something that you don't belong in. So you're you're blocking your energy because you have it naturally. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like if you take a an animal that's supposed to be out in the wild but you keep it caged in, it's going to be more aggressive than the animals that are naturally supposed to be caged in. That is the reason why blacks that hang around whites are more dangerous than the white people that they hang around when it comes to black people because they are trying so hard to fit in somewhere they don't belong. Well, somebody, uh, Syrian is asking, where where do you get your information from? Where is from? this person that's on the, chat, on, the, on the line? Where did he go? He's just listening. He's just in the box with us listening. I mean, because I would love for him to say something. Well, you know, <laughs> some people, some people just like. Said, so I'm dangerous. Um, Scott Line, if you fall into the category of what I said, then you damn right. I mean, but only you would know your lifestyle and only you would, if you hang around a bunch of white people and you are a black person, 
then you are going to be very disruptive to yourself and to other black people. Okay, if you're, if you're, uh, again, uh, Syrian is asking, where are you getting your information from? Okay, so Syrian, I'm a black person. That's where I got my information from. I mean, again, <laughs> okay. you have to be in tune with yourself in order to know certain things about yourself, such as your melanin, the fact that you, if you don't stay, if you stay in cold climate as a, uh, a brown complected or melanated complected person, um, that and, and you're and also the reason why our hair i'm going to get back to the syrian jews question but this ties in just in parentheses our hair is also affected by the types of melanin that we have so there are different types of melanin that's the reason why you will have a person who's indian or who's aboriginal and they have dark skin but their hair is still straight because the types of melanin that we have is what causes our hair to coil and stand up so it's different types of melanin. That's the reason why when you do see those people, their skin looks almost painted on. It looks like a sandy, dusky brown. It doesn't look the same as ours because it's not the same type of melanin, which means that it doesn't absorb energy the same way. So back to um, Siri and Jude's question. If you are a black person that's in tune with yourself, genuinely in tune with yourself, these things would just come naturally because it's genetically encoded. It's not something that a white person or a book has to tell you. Well, you know, uh, so this this, this audience Patrol here. Said, yeah, go ahead. What you cannot go on TV and say all of us. First and foremost, TV is uh, ran by white people, so I'm pretty sure they wouldn't want that on the TV anyway. Cool. Okay. Um, well, actually, you're not you're not going to be able to go on nobody's platform, Sister Deity, and, and tell these people, you know, your your source is well, it's simply because I'm black and I'm in tune, whatever. They're gonna you have to. They're gonna they're no, gonna I want mean, everything. I'm not saying anything that's mathematic or science. I mean, if you have a human body and you know that if you are physically melanated that you need sun, that's not something. That, I, that you have to go to a class and study. I mean, that's common sense. Not really. I mean, because you have to explain. Like you tell, you say that that uh, you talk about this antenna on your head. We know what that. I mean, do you know what an antenna right, if is? Anything that sticks up, right? So if you have a TV, right? You know, for I'm not talking about the TVs that they have now, but even that, uh, have, you know, you have satellite dishes, or you know, you had the TVs back in the day that had the antennas. The antennas did not fall down. If your antennas fell down, then that means that your TV wouldn't work. I mean, it, it, you know, the screen will start buzzing. Your antennas stick up. So when your hair naturally sticks up, it's because you are. That's the energy receptor, and it affects how you move. It affects how you think. It affects how you feel. It's an antenna. That's common sense. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that a person who's bald doesn't have those, can't get those same vibrations. But when you cut your hair, it is different than when your hair falls out. It's just like um, the, the, the incision of a cut is completely different than an incision of a break or a breakage. It's, it, both, either way, it's coming off or it's being torn, but it's a completely different effect that happens. You know, hair hair is nothing but dead cells. So I mean, how? No, so a black person's hair is not dead because in order it is to dead. Be dead, it has to fall. When you stand upright, that means that no, you're alive, a dead person lays. Your your fingernails and your hair, those are dead cells. That's what you were taught. No, that's it's what not, it is. That's why it don't that's hurt. Not what it is. That's why it don't hurt when you cut it. Black Well, 
Well, we got we got like uh, five ten minutes left here, and uh, we gonna we'll we'll come. I might talk about this when I when I feel like it. I, you know, uh, because it's, it's things here to, here. You know, this right. is the, so the is this, of energy set is hair is dead. Why do you feel it when somebody touches your hair? Absolutely. Well, it, the reason why you do feel it, and that is true, but it also um, it reflects on your scalp. But you're actually correct. Absolutely. Uh, white people, when you again, when your hair or any not just white people, but any Neanderthal, excuse me, any Neanderthal group of people. <laughs> When their hair falls flat, because of the fact that their hair falls flat, it just doesn't. And, and coon patrol, I think you patrolling yourself because you the real coon on here. But um, yeah, the V of reason, I see. But see, like I said, at the end of the day, um, when you don't have knowledge of self, you you're very confused and conflicted. Um, and that's what happens. And, and it's not to say anything bad about certain people. It's just that when when people still want acceptance from white people, they don't believe anything about themselves to be positive. Let's see here. Absolutely, sunshine. So, you know, um, when you are forced to thinking that your hair is dead as a black person, then it makes you not take care of your hair in the same way in which you should because you feel like it's nothing anyway. Your hair is not dead. White people's hair is. Coon Patrol, I mean, again, I've already explained myself on that. Yeah, Miss Fox. So people are perming their child's hair, and that's because again, they believe that their hair is absolutely nothing, and it'll grow back. Like it's self hate. It's self hate to the max. They really do have self hate. Well, I tell you, you and know that is the reason why white people are going crazy and buying melanin. I mean, again, they want what we have, but the falseness of an injected melanin is not going to give them the same energy that we have, nor is it going to add certain things to their existence. These people can't even go out in the sun or they'll die. Again, you have black people that just hate being black. You have black people that want to assimilate bad so bad with whiteness that they can't stand to hear anything positive about black because they haven't experienced anything positive in their black existence. Absolutely, Miss Fox. Well, I won't say that no, there are black women that don't like their natural hair. And it is because the, their beauty is not promoted. And, um, you know, black people, specifically darker skinned women, are oftentimes seen as masculine. So they want to emulate what they feel or what has been presented as the ultimate guide of what femininity is supposed to be. However, um, it's not femininity. It's just a low vibrational being. When you're dealing with a white person, it's almost like dealing with a, a step above dealing with an animal because those people have Neanderthal DNA. So it's not, that's the reason why a lot of white people are into bestiality and pedophilia because the only thing that they have control over and dominance over physically is a child or an animal. They are not a strong race of people. Black people can go from a white person to a Chinese person to a uh, Indian person or whatever, or some type of Asian diaspora person because once their vibrational energy is lowered, they still got other levels to go. And that is the reason why black, white people are into bestiality, bestiality and pedophilia because they are so weak genetically, spiritually. You can't get no lower than that. Your vibration can't get no. So they start to partake in deviant acts over things and people that they can control physically. And that is the reason why the only way that they can control blacks is through killing them or with uh, um, 
false power, which is a gun or something that they created. They can't physically control a black person. So when a white man dates a black woman, what he starts to feel like a lot of the times is a masculine person, or at least he tries to feel that way, but he, he, he can't. And so she usually is the one that kind of like dominates the relationship. Okay, with that said, uh, I think think we're getting ready to get out of here. Um, there's a, I might make a video response to, to what Absolutely, you... Absolutely, Sunshine. So they can't deal with the sun because they are not natural beings. They, they, they're unnatural type of people. That's just like if you have an inbred group of people or, you know, uh, they create something that is... Um, what do you call it? Dysfunctional or distorted or something like this. They're not, you know. Yeah, so um, with that said, I think we're going to end, end on that note. I might make a video response to some of the things that you said because this is the Reality's Temple and people know how, uh, how I am. And, you know, I, I have to challenge things, certain things that to, to, to me don't make sense but not tonight i'm too tired okay so um the dude that's on here can he say like he could talk right you just heard him you just heard him laugh i mean why is he not saying anything Be because he just just listening he's just in the box with us listening that's all no but i have a question for him I don't know if he if he wishes to uh, uh, answer a question real quick. I guess that would be fine. If he don't want to, I mean, he doesn't go have ahead. to. Go, go, go ahead. Okay, so um, what's your name? Uh, Sunshine. Sunshine. Okay, so I have a question. I understand your point of view. Okay. Did you, have you grown up around a bunch of white people? No, no. Okay, so you grew up around a lot of black people. Yes. Thank you, Miss Fox. I appreciate it. So, um, you understand my point of view, but was there anything, because you may not, and that's fine, but is there anything that you did not agree with? If there was anything that, oh, I didn't hear the last part of it. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm, what, what did you say? Can you please repeat that, please? Yeah, is there anything that I said that you didn't agree with? And if you didn't, that's fine. I mean, you know. Well, well, science proves that Caucasians have three to five percent Neanderthal DNA in their blood, so you're not wrong about that part. But that's scientific fact. It's not them, but any straight-haired people, such as the Asians, Indians, yeah, you know, all that. of those people, they um are not full human. Yeah, Asian himself is uh, also, but they, they, they're more like ominid. Asian got 50% DNA, according to their, according to their, according to the signs. That they, they're 50 Christopher, are you Syrian Jude in the chat? No, no. no. <laughs> oh, okay. No, and so the reason why I wanted to, to talk to you or whatever is because this is a really good conversation, but of course you got to have the dialogue, I want to, you know, to keep the dialogue going back and forth with somebody. So, um, have you ever dated outside your race? Never. You can't spell Caucasian without Asian. Absolutely, Don Anderson. Thank you for pointing no. that out. Now, um, have you ever dated outside your race, Christopher? No, I ne no, I don't believe in um, dating outside, outside of black race at all, no. I have not. And are you Jamaican? Huh? What? What? Is, what is, are you Jamaican? Yes, I'm Jamaican. Yes. Okay, you're Jamaican. Yes. Okay. Because you know, a lot of those Caribbean people, they really have a big issue with their blackness. Like Haitians have a lot of self hate. Jamaicans have a lot of self hate for some strange reason, and it's even more prevalent and accepted in the Caribbean than it is in the American <clears throat> America. Vote for us. What, what, what do you mean? So um, I'm 
from Miami, and um, okay. yeah, skin bleaching is very big, Don Anderson, in Jamaica. And and not only is it it's big everywhere, but it's very promoted. It's very much so promoted in the Caribbean. It's almost like a form of adornment in Jamaica. Like ble bleaching your skin is just like getting a hair weave or you know a car or some shit like that in Jamaica. I had this guy for oh, well, this this classmate. A mine's back home in Miami, and he was saying that when he went to Jamaica because he was lighter skin, they tried to, um, they tried to kidnap him for money because they believed that he had money, and they did that to somebody else in Haiti that I knew. Um, another classmate spoke about how they did that to him in Haiti because he had what they perceived to be lighter skin. Okay. And so for my from my experience, just dealing with a lot of Caribbean black people descendants of slaves, they have a lot of disdain and hatred for blackness. Just as much as those Africans, those those West Africans, those Nigerian people, they have a lot of hatred for blackness. And not just Nigerians, but a lot of Africans just have a hatred for black. And the Caribbean people are very, very, very big on self-hate for some odd reason. Why is that? Um, that's a question that, um, I, I can't really answer. Cause, um, I'm, have you ever met those types of Jamaicans that had self-hatred? Yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. I, I understand where you're coming from on that. Yeah, it's just, it really boggles my mind how... A lot of them don't even consider themselves black. They say that they're Jamaican and thing like that. I, I see your point of view. I understand what you're saying. So, yeah, but they do have a big epidemic. And 77% of Nigerian women and all of them damn Africans, a lot of them have hatred, a lot of hatred for blackness, Don Anderson. Um, you know, yes, in this box, the, the Egyptians were black and they built the pyramids. There could not have been any white Egyptians because white people can't be in the sun. So they die off, you know, which means, that, and the reason why white people are so aggressive and always attacking black people, and this is the reason why you have the police doing so, all the police is is a race force it's, it's a it's a race force that is trying to preserve the white race and get blacks which is the dominant race off the earth in in their animalistic type of way which would never happen but when you're dealing with people who have a neanderthal gene they're not thinking in a human way they're thinking in a savage animal way because they are part animal that is the reason why any black man that joins the police force has basically said he doesn't give a fuck about his blackness and he has now joined forces with his enemy to destroy his own kind, which means that even in the position that he's in as a police officer, white police officers would never respect him, but they will allow him to join forces to killing off his own people because white people get off on seeing blacks join forces with the KKK to hate their own kind. That's all a black police officer is, is a race traitor in a coon, period. It says, somebody said, um, first and foremost, skin bleaching is looked down upon in Jamaica. You can't even get jobs there with bleached out skin. First and foremost, how would they know in most cases if your skin is bleached out, if you're going out of your way to lighten it? And Jamaica is very big with bleaching and a lot of those people if you see they have their face looks one color and their body is a whole different color well skin bleaching in jamaica is not <coughs> the population is what 2.8 million so the, the skin bleaching is not on a say 50 percent percentile it's like it's, i mean but who's to say what the population actually is? Because we can't count everybody. I mean, people will give you statistics and say that black people only make up 12%. And that's far from the truth. Jamaicans oftentimes hate being black. And particularly, they hate black Americans, um, which a lot of foreigners do, you know, for whatever reason. 
self hate. I I wouldn't say um, I wouldn't yeah. say Jama- I wouldn't say Jamaicans hate Black Americans. <laughs> I w- if you if you you could say that there's a um a misconception of each other because I could say the same thing about Black Americans, but I wouldn't say that because that would be generalizing. Understand? Well, see. Mm-hmm. So that's why, me personally, I have no issues with any form of dark person. Well, no, no, and that's not to say that every black Jamaican person has a a, a, a hatred towards black American uh, people, but a, a good amount of Caribbean people have a disdain for black Americans because they don't even like the skin that they're in. So they come over to a country that we built as black Americans and they want to side with the dominant society yet these same people claim to be Christians, but you want to side with the evil side of it all. Like these people, you gotta understand, these people are crazy. Um, Ms. Fox says, I don't want animal life there. Absolutely. First and foremost, white people get lights as though the lights just grows out of their scalp. Whereas black people, if black people were to get life, it would have to be because they are in a dirty ass environment where a life headed person was at. Like if life doesn't find us, we have to go to where the life is, period. Um, Because our hair is naturally dry, um, those types of things can't survive on dry hair. So what the, it is. That is so the reason why if a black person straightens their hair with a flattened iron or a straightening comb and they don't have a perm, they have to have oil in their hair to keep the hair weighed down. That is the reason why a lot of black women reverted to perms so that their hair could be straight without the weight of oil so that their hair could fling and swing like a white person's hair. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, so... You, was you referring to someone that made a comment in the section, or was you saying that to me? Yeah, no, I'm talking to somebody that's in the comment. Oh, 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 okay. I was, you know, I was looking at a comment. Oh, okay. But with that said, um, we we getting ready to get out of here because uh, I got I got to go. But uh, I don't know. You got you had it going on, Sister Deity. Uh, we're, gonna to, <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna to, we're gonna have to get you back again. Like I said, I might. I don't know. It's quite how I feel like it. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Hey, up! Uh, if you could just, you could fall back and let me just kind of like talk to these people, cause I want to talk to Don Anderson. Give him the link real quick, huh? Well, the link is the link is there. I, I put it on. I put it back there again. Yeah, Don Anderson, please get on. Don, he's gonna give you the link to the hangout. And um. So, Don, the link is right there. So, just click on that link, and then you can get on. Buy Scott's lawn care and go make sure that you get some whatever you need to get to get your mind right, because you are ridiculous. Yes, whites want blacks to hate themselves, but Miss Fox, a lot of black people do hate themselves. That's the reason why there isn't unity in the black community, because you have a lot of black people that empathize with whiteness, because white people are actually the physically weaker force, which which actually, because of their um, narcissism, they play games, head games with black people by trying to make black people think that they're the vicious savages when clearly they are the ones who have done all of the atrocities and the murdering and the destroying of the world, but because one-on-one they're physically weak, they put on this docile act and blacks tend to fall for it because of self-hate. Um, now, and that's not to say that all Caribbean people hate black Americans, but a good amount a good amount of them that come over to America have a lot of self hate already within their own culture and they come over to the to, to this culture and want to be assimilated to a Europeanization. Um Christopher. 
Yes, go ahead. Uh, what is your religion? Uh, I don't have a religion. Okay, so what do you believe in? Um, I don't believe. It's either I know or I don't know. You what? I don't believe. It's either I know or I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so you don't have, you don't have a, you don't believe, you, you're not a spiritual person? It's, it depends on the definition of spiritual. Okay, do you have a definition of it? I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm it, um I only go by what I know. If I, if I don't know, then I don't know. It's, yeah. It's, it's still a matter of belief. So you go by what you know, basically by what you were taught, correct? No, no, but what I experience, what I experience, and by na okay. and, and by nature and existence. Okay, so do you have discernment? Like, so for instance, right? So there could be a person who is a bad person, but you don't know that that person is a bad person. It could be all up in your house, around your kids, or if you have any, around your wife, if you have a girlfriend, or whatever you choose to date, or whatever. And you wouldn't be able to tell that this person is a bad person just based off of their vibes unless you experience them harming you. Is that what you're saying? No, you could feel, I could feel the energy. You could feel if, you could feel the vibe if they're a negative person. You could feel negativity. You could feel positivity. So that's not an experience. That is a, that's a spiritual, that, that's a, do you believe in spiritual, your spirit guide or <laughs> you see, how, do you, how do you feel as though you get those vibrations? Where do you feel that you get those from? Because your physical being can't Well, well can't that. that's, that's what I was saying. If that, if you say that, as, if you say that as, that's spiritual, then okay. But I don't see that as spiritual. I don't see that as right. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what your definition is. That's why I'm I, asking you. I uh, can't tell you what it is. I'm asking. Uh huh. Okay. It does exist. It does exist. It's just there. It just exists with existence. Okay. I think Siri and Jude is Jamaican too. Um, according to what Angel said, where is the um, where is the guy that that wanted to get what, on? What, 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 why, why you ask me if I was Jamaican? Oh, you know, or, or do you, why do you ask me that? Though? I heard the accent. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay. Thank you, Miss Fox, girl. I really appreciate Miss Fox. If you could jump on, I would really, really appreciate that. Like, cause seriously, we usually get so many negative comments on these things that it's really appreciative for somebody to say something positive. So, Miss Fox, that is greatly appreciated. I, I thank you so much for that. Um, the Honorable Louis Barrican was born in the Bronx. Brother Brian X, like, come on, y'all. I need somebody to get on here. Why is everybody afraid to jump on and talk? Like, because, because, we, because we getting ready to get out of here. I don't know what I don't know what you getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to get out of here, <laughs> and uh, you need to you need to set up your channel so folks can go to your channel. You can stay on there all night long, bro. Got some things to do. <laughs> <laughs> But no, but my question is No, my is, question is no more questions. We're getting ready to roll out of here. So I want to, you know, so with that said, uh I want to thank Sister Brittany, Sister Deity actually, for being our special guest. And we'll bring her back and you need to set up your channel so that you can take the party to your house. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all can be on there for six of six, eight hours, however it, it takes, you know. <laughs> hey, I, I can't. I can't do it. I got. I got things I got to do. You just do what you gotta do and let me just be on here with the people. Because I got to go. You ain't gotta leave your house. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know. I might. I might do that for another. For for another little while. Cause you know. But but you tying up my telephone. Uh -uh, ain't nobody calling you right now. Yeah, I, I did get a call. <laughs> I don't know. It might have been somebody trying to call in. And get on the conversation, you know, because my number is public on the in the in the description box. Yeah, I think that was Don trying to call in to get on the conversation. Yeah, it might have been. 
Right. So that's what I'm saying. It's these people. Listen, we holding a good ass conversation. Well, um, we don't have to do this another time because I got to roll. I got to get out of here. And uh, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, look, Don. Don said it was him. Don. Yeah. Yo, Don, this is what you need to do, Don. Call me. Call me. Um. I'm gonna, uh... You need to set up your channel because this channel is getting ready to shut down. Hold on, Don was trying to call, yo. Yeah, I seen that. I seen, I seen it. But you know, we we got to, I got to roll. We got to set up a set up a different different time, maybe uh, next weekend or something. Okay, hold on. Let me. Hey, can you put my phone number in there so that Don can call? Um. The four seven zero number. Yeah, I could, but I got. I'm, I'm getting ready to go. I'm sorry, I got to roll. <laughs> so okay. thank, so thank everybody for uh, <laughs> 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 thank everybody for watching. Sister Deity, really right, appreciate it. Put my phone number right there. Okay, hold on a second. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you, everybody, for watching. Mm -hmm. You need to set up your channel. Then we can, you know, we can, we can roll, and you know. We can start bringing everybody to your channel, and then you don't have to. You can just do everything from your channel. Exactly. So, uh, matter of fact, I think you're better at the computer thing than I am, really. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Broad, Brother Don, Syrian, Sister Sunshine. Yeah, that's her real number. <laughs> 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 No, how do I get it off of here? I'm trying to erase it. <laughs> you trying you try to take your number back? <laughs> I, think you, I think you did. Oh, it's erased? Okay, yeah. Guys. Yeah. What's up? My name is Denise. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you Thank you for, for joining us. And uh, thank Sister Deity. Brother Christopher, thank you for joining Thank you, Talik. Take care. Yeah, yeah. And uh, everybody take it easy. Be careful out there in racist society. It ain't good for us now. <laughs> I assist, Deity. Yeah, so. All right, bye. Until next take time, care. everybody, as Dr. Neal is always saying, I'm out of here. I'm already 5,000. I wish us love, peace, and... And Angel, stay on real quick after this, real quick. Okay, I will. And so, I'm out. Yeah. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace.